Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection Podcast. Today's a Q&A episode. I want to dive into three questions. So let's let's get into those questions. So first question I have is, I've seen some conflicting info. Do you need a calorie surplus to build muscle? I think this is a great question. I've seen this a lot more lately. I think there's a few people who are saying that, hey, you, you don't. Then some people are saying you do. I'll post in my content sometimes where I don't think you necessarily always need to be in a surplus. So, you know, what is, what is it? Like, why is there this conflicting info, right? And it's because it's very context dependent, you know, with Many things when it comes to health and nutrition and fitness, it's people want black or white, right? They want yes or no, you need to, or you don't need to. And again, that's easy. Like, yeah, people just want that kind of yes or no, but really it's, it's, it's more complex than that. And I think that we need to start looking at your specific situation in terms of what's going on. Right. So, all right. So let me, let me start by saying this. So no matter what, you know, being in a calorie surplus is going to, from a muscle building standpoint is going to be superior to maintenance or a deficit. Okay. No matter what, no matter how we swing that, uh, it is going to be superior, but maintenance is also going to be superior to a deficit. Okay. So that doesn't mean that maintenance is a bad place to be for building muscle. It's just, Hey, you know, if we have an influx of calories coming in, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit better for building muscle, right? However, you know, with a calorie surplus is going to come a little bit of fat gain. Now we do know, you know, as we found out more, you know, in order to really maximize, you know, if you want to maximize muscle growth on the net fat gain, then the smaller surplus is what you need, right? A lot of people used to think that you needed this, like a large calorie surplus is what was going to get you, you know, the quicker you gain weight, that's what was going to get you to build muscle. And again, that's not the, the, the case, you know, that's just, it, 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 you might have a little bit more muscle growth, a tiny bit, but it's going to come at the expense of a lot more fat gain in that process. So we're better off being in a kind of low calorie surplus if we're going to choose it there. So again, this is going to be, you know, superior to maintenance, but maintenance can still be a great spot to build muscle. It's just probably going to be a little bit slower uh, in the long run, but the perk is that, Hey, you're really going to limit fat gain and probably have very minimal to none. And again, there's going to be some context, which that to me, that maintenance is going to be superior than a calorie surplus. And then in deficit, Again, we can build some muscle in a deficit, but one, it's it, it's going to be based on your current body composition, right? How much muscle you have, how lean you are, and how how large your energy deficit is, right? The larger your energy deficit is, the the quicker you gain weight, the worse the the deficit's going to be. But it still is not going to build as much muscle as say a you being at maintenance or a uh, calorie surplus would be. So again, we know that a calorie surplus is going to be better from a muscle building standpoint. But like I said, it is very context dependent. Okay. And so I'm going to go over some situations here where uh, it may be more practical than in other situations. Okay. Than, than others. So the higher body fat levels are and the less muscle you have or want, then the need for a calorie surplus to build muscle goes down. And the main reason for this is you already have extra energy reserves on your body. There's really no point in adding a, doing a calorie surplus to build muscle. Like you don't, you don't need it. It's not necessary. You're just going to add more body fat than you need. And now you're going to get further away from your overall physique goals. If you don't care about body fat gain, well, then maybe this is best for you. But, you know, from an overall health perspective, I would argue that if you're already at a, you know, fairly high body fat levels, it's like adding more is probably going to be worse for your health. You know, again, we know muscle can be super uh, beneficial from a long-term term health standpoint, but these higher body fat levels, you don't necessarily need to build more muscle. You need to get some weight off. You need to decrease your, your body fat levels there. So again, in this specific situation, a calorie surplus would not be something that I would recommend for you, even if you want to build some muscle. Okay. Now, if you eat, even if like for you, you don't necessarily want to have the most muscle in the world, then I definitely would say that this is not a good, you know, not the time to do a calorie surplus there. So again, I, I say high, higher body fat levels. What does that look like? I think for men, we're looking at anywhere from like, probably once we get close to 20% body fat or more, it's like, I would say, even if you're like over 15% body fat, which is still decently, like you're not like overly fat at 15%. I think, you know, people overestimate body fat percentages, but you know, if you're in that 15 to 20 range, it's like, you're kind of in, in no man's land. But once you start to get over that 20% body fat range, that's where it's like, Hey, you know, you, you definitely don't need to be in a calorie surplus to build muscle. You're better off being at maintenance. And, I, and I'll tell you what, what to kind of do in these situations. For women, you know, we're probably looking at like 30 to 32% or higher in terms of body fat levels. That's where it's like, hey, a calorie surplus probably isn't going to benefit you much. And again, I would almost even say anywhere from like 25 to 30% as well too, which is a lot of people, right? But I say this, and this doesn't mean that you shouldn't be in a deficit, right? Like maintenance calories, like for whatever reason, people like they can't comprehend that maintenance cal like again, I think people think maintenance calories just means you're not making any progress. And that couldn't be further from the truth. It just 
essentially just means your energy balance is matched with your energy expenditure, but that doesn't mean that there's not changes happening there, right? So yeah, so if you're in those situations, again, I don't think a calorie surplus is needed for you. So now if you're under that, then yes, you do need to be in a calorie surplus. And if you have lofty muscle gain goals, at some point, you probably are going to need to dip into a calorie surplus, but we need to get your body fat percentage in check first here. But like I said, at the very least, you need to spend at least some time at maintenance or higher if building muscle is, is our goal, right? And, and just in general, just for overall health, like we want to make sure we get out of a, a deficit, right? Overall. So again, let's say you're somebody who is at, you know, 15 to 20% or higher as a male over 30 to 32% is, is a female. It's again, it's going to be, you know, in your phases where you're trying to gain muscle, we're going to be at maintenance. We're not going to be at a calorie surplus. You spend time at your maintenance, you know, focus on, on good hypertrophy techniques, you know, getting your, your nutrition dialed in, getting good lifestyle habits in place, sleep, stress management, and you're going to build some muscle at maintenance there, right? And then to get to me, that's going to do more for your long-term look than being like, oh, hey, you're at 32% body fat as a female. Let's 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 gain five. It's like, you don't need to gain weight uh, at, at that point. Now, don't confuse that with, hey, staying in a deficit and trying to drop weight. Again, at some point, you probably are going to want to do that if you're trying to maximize your look and everything like that. But you know, you're going to want to get into a fat loss phase at some point, but we only want that to be a temporary thing, not all the time. And then and again for for guys, you know, if you're over that 15 to 20 percent, again, same thing, you know, at some point you probably want to dip into a a uh, calorie deficit. If overall health and like f physique goals are your number one goal, then then you, you would want to do that at some point. But again, you can get away with building muscle at maintenance here. I also think that you can have a phase where you're in a small surplus for a bit, then transition to maintenance cows for the rest of the muscle gaining phase. So uh, another mistake I see made here with this is, hey, people, they, they, oh, I need a calorie surplus to build muscle. So they think they just need to continue to push weight gain like for as long as possible, right? And again, I don't think that you need to do that. I think you could have an approach where, you know, say you put on a couple pounds, five to 10 pounds. Again, this is all going to be relative to where you're at. You kind of get those body fat percentages to that point to where I just talked about. Now we can turn now we can transition to maintenance calories and you're still going to make great progress from a muscle building standpoint. And I think this is where people, they get this wrong, right? They, they, they feel like they need to always be gaining weight in their, in their building phase. And when they stop now, they need to cut. And again, I think you can, you can set yourself back and you can hurt your progress long-term if you do this. So this is something I've changed my mind on is, you know, not only do we not necessarily need a calorie surplus, but you can also have a surplus for a short amount of time and then transition to maintenance. And so I've made a post in the past about, Hey, you know, for your adding, you know, gaining five to 10 pounds and while you're weight training, focusing on good good, you know, lifestyle habits, nutrition habits, and everything is going to do more for your physique long-term than like trying to be your lowest body weight ever will, will, um, as well too. Right. So again, it also is context dependent as well there. And again, you know, I, I also, I, I guess the last thing I want to say on this is people can kind of misapply this and they were like, Oh, well, Jeff says I can build muscle at maintenance. So then, you know, they, 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 their goal then is to maintain their absolute lowest weight and then they're not eating enough. Right. And this is more so for people who are on the leaner side. So again, this kind of doesn't really apply to the people that I, that I talked about there, but let's say, let's say, let's, let's take an example here of somebody who, let's say they were at like for a female, they were at 35 to 40% body fat men. Let's say you're at, you were at like 25% body fat and, and each of you lost into this range that I just talked about, right. For guys, you lost down to 15 to 20% body fat for women. You got, you lost around 30% body fat. It's like, okay, so what do you do here? You know, there, I would still transition this person to maintenance calories for a bit, right? Again, we wouldn't put them in a calorie surplus, but here's where things can get a little confusing is as you transition them to a little bit higher calorie, you may see your weight slightly go up a couple pounds and that's okay. That's not like you're in a surplus, right? People automatically assume they transition from low calorie state to maintenance calories. They see a little bit of weight gain and they're like, oh crap, I'm in a surplus. No, there's going to be some stabilization there from a water weight perspective. That is not a calorie surplus. That is different, right? So that's where I come back to that adding, you know, five to 10 pounds there. And again, not focusing on your absolute lowest scale weight there, right? So again, that's just kind of an example there. So hopefully this gives you some more insight into if you need a, a calorie surplus to build muscle. Again, I've recently, I've just been more like for most people, a calorie surplus is probably not needed. And again, if you go into a surplus for a little bit, that's okay too, right? Because like I said, if you gain a little bit of weight and you know, you're doing all the things I talked about, it's probably going to be best for your, your, your long-term uh, physique anyways. And then you can, you can just make sure you're at maintenance the rest of it. Right. But you know, just be careful with that. Oh, Hey, I'm in a muscle building phase or a building phase. I'm outside of a fat loss phase. I need to be in a calorie surplus. Again, that's not always going to be uh, the right uh, choice there for you. All right. So next question is how to increase calorie density during my build. So 
kind of what this person means is they're in a building phase. So they're eating a little bit more calories, um, but they're finding that, you know, transitioning from like kind of a fat loss mindset of really high food volume, you know, kind of veggies, really nutrient dense foods. So now it's like, okay, Hey, you need to get more calories. And then again, this is a common thing I see is when people transition to this, they, they, they still try to stick to the same fat loss foods or in that fat loss mindset, because that's what they're used to. And so they're, they're trying to, to, to shovel down like these really high food volume foods. And, and then they only can eat 1700 calories. They're like, well, I just, I just can't eat, you know, I, this is, I, I get full and I just can't eat enough calories. That just seems like so much food. And again, it's because your mindset is, is warped towards fat loss, right? Fat loss, like high, high food volume, low calorie. And so your body does kind of get used to that and, you know, super high protein. Again, there's some benefits to high protein that we need to uh, keep in mind. But again, if you're struggling to get enough calories, like you do need to increase your caloric density a little bit. So it's like, what are some example changes of this? You know, add in some things like nut butters, right? Those are very uh, calorically dense. Switch out chicken breasts for more like chicken thighs, you know, 90, 96 for ground beef or ground turkey to 90, 10 or 85, 15, right? Add in more olive oil, add in a little bit of tasty food. You know, what we don't want to do is we don't just want to add in like a ton of tasty food, you know, because then that's going to probably lead to you over consuming calories and, you know, missing out on essential vitamins and minerals that we need. Right. So it's like, we want to increase cal calorie density when we're eating more calories, but we want to make sure we do that in a way that is adding, you know, a good quality food as well too. Right. So we want to make some of these transitions. If you did low fat dairy, maybe you do nor uh, regular dairy, you know, eating more avocados, eating more nuts, you know, switching from cauliflower rice to regular rice, you know, small changes like that. If you're somebody who really likes those like low carb tortillas, switching to regular carb tortillas, right? These are these are easy ways to uh, increase your your calorie density. For some people, this sounds like okay, that's you know goes totally against what I've always been told. And and yeah, again, this is where we want to make sure we get out of that that fat loss mindset that a lot of people are uh, in. So again, that's a way to increase your calorie density there. All right. So last question of the day coming down with something, any tips. So I'm assuming this person means a sickness. So I think this is a great time to go over this just because again, this is a, uh, you know, cold and flu season, right? So especially here in the States or if you're on this side of the world. So I want to talk about some things to do to limit getting sick and then some things you can do when you get sick. Okay. And then, and then how we want to go about training, how do we want to eat and and what do we do following being sick? All right. So what, what to do, like, how do we, how do we limit getting sick during these periods of time? We obviously want to make sure sleep's on point. You know, you want to make sure you get plenty of sleep. You know, obviously if you don't get good sleep or a uh, our immune system is going to be suppressed. You know, we're going to have a, be at a higher risk of getting sick. Same thing with stress management. You know, if we're just in this chronically high stress state, you're probably going to be at an increased risk of getting sick, right? Part of it's probably going to be, hey, you're going to be kind of going through your micronutrients a little bit more. Um, that's going to increase your, you know, suppress your immune system. And then again, just stress in general can uh, suppress your immune system, right? You're always in that just fight or, fight or flight, like go, go, go uh, type mindset. So making sure we we have some stress management techniques in place and we moderate our overall uh, stress. We, 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 we learn how to, yeah, we, we moderate our overall stress load, right? So getting rid of unnecessary stressors as well. And then a couple of these things I'm going to talk about can also add to, to stressors, you know, meal timing, right? We want to make sure that we're not eating like really large meals, super late at night. That's going to impact sleep, right? Cause you know, if we eat these really large meals late at night, you know, that, that can impact sleep, which in turn is going to uh, suppress your immune system, right? So we want to make sure that we are, you know, eating it relatively normal times here uh, throughout the day. Uh, get outside when possible. Again, it can be tough to get outside, but we still want to get outside when we can get some get some natural light and just, you know, being stuck inside uh, is is a big thing in, in, in the winter. And again, we want to get outside, get that sun and just get some some fresh air as well too, right? So we want to make sure we're, we're getting outside when possible. Now, if it's, you know, you got, you got a foot of snow on the ground and there's ice everywhere. It's like, okay, you know, be smart about it. But uh, again, that's probably not the case for most people. But again, even then it's like, you, you do probably want to try to get outside when possible, but obviously we have to kind of temper our expectations and what we can do here in this, in this period of time. We want to try to avoid like large deficits. And, and really when I say large deficits, we really want to try to avoid deficits that are like really void of nutrient dense micronutrients as well. Right. So again, kind of that person that's, you know, Hey, they want a fat loss diet. So they just completely slash their calories. They don't really focus on what foods they're getting. They just try to eat low calorie. Again, you're probably going to be at a higher risk of nutrient deficiencies, you know, increasing your risk of infection as well too. Right. You know, getting a sickness, but you know, I think fat loss in general is, is another, it's a stressor on the body. So it can add stress, which we talked about that, you know, with stress, what, what can happen there, but, but, you know, dieting in general does increase your risk of getting sick. So, or it can, right? Not necessarily it, it does for sure, but it can. Um, so really what we want to do is we want to avoid really large deficits and, and, and deficits that also are paired with poor diet quality uh, in the process. But I will say this also isn't really the time to smash food either, right? Because same thing, I mean, you know, eating a ton of calories and, you know, again, probably if we're going to be eating a lot of calories, we're going to be eating a lot of 
calorie dense, highly palatable, tasty foods. Again, that's probably not going to be great from a overall health standpoint, which can impact you getting sick as well too. We want to find the right amount of training and movement. So this is not, you know, you don't want to necessarily underdo movement because that's obviously going to increase your risk of getting, getting sick, uh, not exercising enough. That's going to increase that. But, you know, doing too much as well can also impact, especially us can impact us, especially if things like sleep and stress management are, are off and or our, our diet's just not of high quality. That's where we can run into some issues here. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with doing a lot of movement, especially if you're eating enough, you're getting the micronutrients you need, and you're, you're recovering well in terms of sleep and stress management, right? But a lot of people, they do struggle with that and, and getting outside as well too. You know, a lot of people struggle with that. And then, and then that's where you can run into some issues. So we kind of want to find that sweet spot, but understand we can push it so long as these other things are uh, in check as well too, because if our overall recovery is low, AKA our stress load is high and we don't have the, the things to lower that stress and uh, increase our recovery, uh, you're going to be, you know, an increased risk of getting sick. Good circadian rhythm health. So again, this, this kind of ties in everything we talked about, but, you know, getting outside early in the day, if you can getting outside getting some sunlight at least throughout the day can be super helpful. Uh, making sure you're you're sleeping and waking uh, around the same times, uh, making sure you are getting yourself set up for a good night's sleep, the meal timing aspect of it, right? Avoiding really large meals late at night. And this also comes back to alcohol, right? Because alcohol can impact your circadian rhythm, especially if you're drinking late at night and, and the more you have, right? Because then it's going to impact sleep, which impacts your circadian rhythm. So we want to make sure that is in check. And then again, I kind of hit on this uh, in the in the deficit side of things, but we want to make sure we're getting in plenty of micronutrients. We want to make sure that we are uh, not devoid of, of anything essentially. Right. And this is where like, if you are, you know, eating in a large deficit, your risk of that goes up. And then if you're also eating in a huge surplus, you know, again, you're probably going to be getting a lot of calories and you, you may hit your micronutrients, but I would imagine, you know, when we're in a large calorie surplus, it's probably going to be a lot of foods that don't come with a lot of vitamins and minerals that we need, right? So those would be things that we'd want to look at. As far as like certain micronutrients to supplement with, you know, I'm going to say, and, and, and I'm going to go into these, some specific ones for sickness if you get sick, but, you know, vitamin D is going to be big, fish oil, taking your multivitamins, maybe a little bit of extra vitamin C uh, as well too, magnesium. These are all going to be things that are going to be super helpful during this time there. And then obviously any 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 micros that you know, like if you have your blood work or again, any, any vitamins at your risk of needing a little bit more of, we want to make sure we take those. All right. So let's say you do get sick. Then it's like, what do we do? So first, you know, it's obviously going to be, Hey, sleep, rest, hydration. Those are the, the, the bulk of what you need to do, right? You need to sleep. You want to rest and we want to make sure we're, we're staying hydrated. Right. And again, this doesn't mean go and push your training. We'll talk about what training looks like, but a couple supplements we can add in is zinc, acetate, lozenges. And again, you want to have those dissolve and then you can make a dose of vitamin C for a period of time, right? Again, be careful with too much vitamin C as it can impact your gut health potentially, right? So you just want to look out for that. But again, increasing your vitamin C dosage and then even vitamin D2 can be helpful, uh, maybe taking a little bit extra uh, during that period of time um, there. All right. So how do we train when we're sick? Well, you know, if you are have a fever. Well, I guess let me say this. It depends on where you're at. If you have a home gym and it's just you, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit different than somebody who has to go into a gym because we need to be respectful of and making sure we don't get them sick. So if you go into a gym, you know, I would be a lot more on, leaning on the side of, Hey, wait till you feel pretty good. If you're training at home. We probably have a little bit more leeway here in terms of what we can do. But you know, if you have a fever, you're feeling super beat up. It's like, Hey, just rest. Don't do anything. Once you start to feel a little bit better, maybe you get some light movement in, right? Whether that be a little bit on like a cardio uh, on a bike, or you just get out and get some light movement in outside. Obviously, if it's freezing cold, you probably don't want to do that when you're sick. But from there, you know, then we can start to, to, to ramp it back up. But what you really don't want to do is you don't want to push the intensity when you're sick. It's just going to prolong the recovery process. And then you're just going to feel you're just not going to get better sooner. And then that's more time that you're not able to really uh, push yourself uh, in that um, state. But again, we want to make sure we rest and we don't push it if we don't need to there. This is why I think it's important to stay on track when you can, because then this allows you to have a little bit more flexibility when you aren't able to. So how to eat when, when sick. So I think here, what we want to do is, you know, try to get in some protein when possible, but at the end of the day, we don't want to uh, force feed. So if you're, if you're really sick and you can't eat, obviously don't do that. Don't force feed there. You know, you want to make sure you feel good and you don't want to like, again, that's going to stress the body. If you're like, just not hungry and you're like forced, like, I got to get my protein in like, okay, probably not the time to be doing that. You know, probably not the time to be counting your calories and macros, like take a break from it for a couple of days, listen to your body. It can be a great time to listen to your body and what it says, but we probably don't want to just force feed if we're not hungry. So in saying that, you know, following being sick, if you were somebody who you just weren't hungry during that period of time when you were sick, and then you get back to normal, just look out. You know, usually I find that for clients when they aren't able to eat much when they're sick, once they start to feel better, it's like, boom, that the pendulum swings the other way. And the next thing you know, they're just ravenously hungry. So just be on the lookout for that 
on there. And then ease back into training, ease back into your nutrition uh, for the first week or so. Don't go back to ball, you know, going balls to the wall and feeling like you need to make up for lost time, ease back into it. So hopefully that gives you some insight on how to manage this kind of cold, cold and flu season and what to do if you get sick there. Again, let me know if you guys have any questions on any of this. If you found this podcast to be helpful, if you could leave a rating and review, that will help more people find this. Again, I appreciate everybody who listens there. But again, obviously want to continue to grow and have more people uh, find this uh, podcast and get this information out. Next, if you haven't yet, give me a follow on Instagram, Jeff, H-O-E-H-N underscore. That's where I'm most active on social media. If you have any questions on this podcast or any other podcast episodes, best place to reach out to me. I'm just a DM away with any questions. And then lastly, you know, if you're somebody who struggles with knowing if you should be in a calorie surplus, what that surplus should be, should you be at maintenance, then my free 30-minute strategy calls for you. The link to that is in the show notes and we'll map out a game plan for you there. So that's it for me. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I will chat with you next time.